So the graph of this looks something like this. At uh, when time is zero, uh, this value over here, cos square root kp, ki t is going to be uh, uh, one. So the value of one minus this is going to be zero. So we have this point over here. And uh, when time is pi over two square root ki, then the, this evaluates to cos of pi by two, which is zero. So it's one minus zero, which is one. So that's over here. And then when time is uh, pi over square root ki, then it becomes one minus minus one, which is two. So we get this oscillation. That's what this amounts to. And uh, this means that though we want to be at this value over here, what you're actually going to get is an oscillating sinusoidal signal, which is why we say that with integral mode control, we are going to have uh, the ability to look at the accumulated error, but we in fact end up with oscillatory control. So we never use integral mode control on its own. It always needs to be combined with proportional and derivative control. Um, specifically what's going on is that uh, when you, at this point in time, we have no accumulated errors. So we're going to go up, uh, send faster, and the buffer fills up, reaches the set point, but there's too much has been sent. At this point, it starts uh, overshooting and here the accumulated error has now reached uh, enough so that it starts going the other way and then but now it's overshot again so we essentially get up oscillatory mode control and this you can see directly by looking at the form of a second order system there's not a first order system it's a second order system and from this second order system it's quite clear that we will essentially end up with the oscillatory control